Good morning, everyone, once again. I guess the first announcement is, is that I've decided for the sake of a better experience for those who are watching um, to record the service instead of going live. Um, we're still trying to figure out exactly what the issue is. It's possibly that the Wi-Fi is a little bit too far for us, even though it's unimpeded. And so we may be moving it around just so that we get a better signal here up front. But at the moment, we will record it and I will go home and edit the, uh, the recording and uh, make it all fancy and nice and put it up um, later on in the day uh, when I'm able to get it up. And so I welcome you who are joining us uh, on video watching us in the future and I thank you for joining us on behalf of the parish In terms of COVID restrictions, we are required to wear our masks for the sake of singing and to kind of keep ourselves aware that COVID hasn't gone and that it is wise to continue the practice of distancing sanitization, and of course, mask use. But with that said, those who are here, when we come up to the podium to read, will be removing our masks, and at some point soon, we will cordon off the first two rows of, uh, or three rows of this area, just in case anybody feels uncomfortable with that. Remember, if you're singing, you must wear a mask. If you are having problems breathing, uh, for whatever reason, um, please just indicate to those around you that, you that you would like to take off your mask and see if they're comfortable. And be honest, please. That is important. Even though the governmental restrictions are off, we need to just be mindful. And it's always good to ask. Ask the people around you if they're comfortable. Um, and if you do have a cough or any symptoms, please just ensure that you wear it throughout the service. Uh, tomorrow evening, uh, we will have the meditation time. The meditation time, unfortunately, did not get recorded last week because I forgot to press a button. Uh, and I don't think that the preamble would have made sense without the button being pressed for the latter part of the meditation itself. Um, though I've been told that it was quite nice. Um, the meditation group is quite good and important, and you may say, well, why am I going with a group to medicate, meditate if there's, if there's nothing other than me sitting in silence with my eyes closed or focused on the candle? There's something very special about the group experience that is also a very private experience. And so, though I encourage you to watch from home if you're unable to attend, attendance is actually a very powerful and profound experience. And so I encourage you, six o'clock tomorrow, if that, if that suits you, to be able to come out and just experience maybe even once. We read the scripture a few times, and uh, I direct you with questions for you to internally digest and think upon. And so um, it doesn't last more than, say, 45 minutes at the most. And, uh, and usually, lately, I think it's been around 30 minutes. So please, if you're interested, come out. Um, I may, after Easter, move it to 6.30, just to make it a little more convenient for people. And of course, distancing and mask use are, um, are offered. Uh, and also the distancing is definitely in place. Uh, but I think that everybody wears their masks, so just so you know. Uh, on Tuesday morning, we have a 7.30 sharp start for morning prayer. Uh, on Holy Week, we will have the Eucharist, but morning prayer is going to start sharp at 7.30, probably throughout the year. It's been very successful. Uh, we have a couple of parishioners, apart from Sharon and I, who are coming out, and they have time restrictions. And that means that I must be uh, good with my time. And so we end at five minutes to eight. 
So if you're at all concerned about the time, five minutes to eight, we're done. And it's a very nice, lovely prayer service um, that's very traditionally Anglican. Uh, and uh, we use the Church of England uh, application uh, daily prayer, which you can download on your app, uh, on your phone or pad or computer even. On, s on Wednesday, unfortunately, uh, the Reformation Lenten program uh, is uh, going to be suspended for that week. Uh, I have a procedure at the hospital that I must go to, and so um, I am unable to attend, and I didn't feel that it was fair to load on a history course to Sharon, or anyone else for that matter, or Connor. Um, I just didn't feel that that was appropriate. So Wednesday, there will be no Reformation, uh, but... The good news is I'll probably get one of those Reformation courses that I've done and put it up on the internet so that if you're interested, you'll be able to watch that. Next week is Vestry. Um, and it's going to be a very important Vestry following the service. We will be having it inside the hall. If you're a Vestry member, please ensure that you've circled that in your calendar. We will be discussing a number of very important issues and also trying a bit of a new formula, um, similar, but a little bit of a new formula to try to have vestry members uh, offer more to uh, the agenda and more to the items of priorities. And I think that that will be very good for the wardens as well as for myself and for the direction of the parish in general. Uh, yesterday I attended um, the Peninsula Heritage Annual General Meeting, and it was a wonderful opportunity to listen to um, a different perspective on, on the history of the, of the region, and uh, there was a wonderful presentation given, and uh, it was really encouraging, and so I'm very grateful to have, uh, to have gone and to be a member uh, of uh, Peninsula Heritage, and I hope to be able to work with um, the executive in terms of uh, how to uh, extend our, uh, uh, our parish um, and uh, promote it uh, to those people who are interested. So, without further ado, let us prepare ourselves for worship. We begin our service on page 185 in your green books of alternative services, page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ignore the board today, I didn't say to They're all in our, in our bulletin. Our opening hymn is God We Know, hymn number 565. <coughs>
mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray our public prayer. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first lesson. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. This morning's appointed psalm, Psalm 32, and we'll read it responsibly by verse. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all of our faithful offer prayer to you at the time of distress, the rush. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye on Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked. But steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thank you, 
Our gradual hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus, hymn number 532. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger man gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in, in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet 
and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come home and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of Christ. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. It is a Mothering Sunday in England, and so it is a time for them to think about mothers. So we'll, we will do that today as well. But I remember a few years back, we also celebrated it with seminal cake, which is a tradition in, in England. Um, we haven't done it for a few years, but maybe that's something we could think about doing next year. It's quite, it's quite a, lovely, uh, a lovely cake. But on to today. Our readings this morning, like every Sunday, there's a thread that goes through them all uh, and, and pulls together to make that final and probably in this morning almost three messages. In the, in the first reading, we hear about the Israelites who have finally gotten to the Promised Land. And uh, they, of course, have had their ups and downs all through that journey, but God has always been there to wrap his arms around them and to keep them going. They arrive, they no longer are eating manna and uh, it's gone. And now they're going to, God has fulfilled that promise that they are going to be able to, to eat of the fruit of the ground and of the, the, the harvest. So there we hear that God's promise is fulfilled. And in the song we hear about forgiveness which is truly the thread that runs through it all, is forgiveness. And in the gospel, we hear about not only the prodigal son, we hear about the obedient brother, and we hear about the loving father, which is probably in my heart is what this whole parable should have been entitled, was the loving father. Very typical two sons, they're jealous of one another, one doesn't think that he's got enough and he wants to, he wants half of what he believes is his, although his father's still living. And, uh, really, the understanding is, is that you're not, you don't get anything of what is your father's until the father's gone, but he's demanded and he's getting, his father is giving it to him, uh, that he's going to give him half of what he's, he feels he's entitled to he doesn't seem to care that as long as his father is living the farm or the property belongs to dear old dad. He's, he wants his way, he's going away. He convinces his father to give him his share, takes the money, so to speak, and he runs. He's looking for happiness and fulfillment in life right now with no thought to his future. We too strive for the same things in our lives. We can start out with the best of intentions. We believe in the Father, but we get caught up in ourselves, become self-absorbed, hurt the ones that love us, walk away from them, and take a different path. It is called what God has given us all, free will. 
We fall into the trap of what society dictates as the right thing to do. The grass looks greener on the other side. The prodigal son puts his wants and desires first, and the love of his father is completely gone. It's out of sight. His father gives him what he wants and lets him go. I'm sure he is heartbroken with his son's decision, but he lets him go. I'm not sure about you, but I believe that we all go through some kind of a division between our father, our father in heaven. We walk away, we have a dry spell, we can't pray, our prayers don't mean anything. We don't seem to be getting the answers that we want, so we walk away. But the one thing that we all know is that God doesn't walk away. He's right there, through it all. Whether we see him or not, he's right there. I had to let Dana go once. It wasn't easy. Told him I didn't like him, but I'd always love him. Uh, and actually, I really like him again. <laughs> he's come back. He understands where I was coming from now. And uh, he's sorry for what he did and what he put me through. So I give thanks to God for that because God never left him. And uh, it took him a while, but he realized that as well, that God was always there. Eventually, the prodigal son runs out of money. The party stop, the friends disappear. He's reached rock bottom so far down that he is tending to the pigs. Not so good for a Jewish boy. And there is no place for him to go. He realizes his mistakes, and if he could, he'd like to go home and fix things with his dad. He recognizes the errors of his ways. He damaged his relationship with God. He damaged his relationship with his earthly father. And those pigs are eating better than he is. He also realizes he cannot undo what he's done. He returns home in hope that his father will give him a job. A job, not just take him back in as his son, but he's going home looking for his father to give him a job because he's now realized that that's what he should have been doing in the first place, was working with dad. Now the loving father I, I, I'm a very much a visual learner, and when I read scripture, I visualize that scripture in my head. So I want you to visualize that father standing outside his house day after day, hoping to see his son return. He's looking at the horizon, he's looking down the road, longing and praying for a glimpse of his youngest son, hoping for his return. I believe that is how God waits for us to turn to him in prayer every day. When he sees his son in the distance, he doesn't turn away. He runs to him, clasps him in his arms, kisses him, brings him in and throws him a party. By giving his son everything, he allowed his son to see himself clearly. Perhaps that is why God allows us the freedom to go our own way. We think we can do it on our own, and we know it all. Then comes a time when we are feeling lost, lonely, and we want to return home. He knows that we would see the error of our ways and how foolish we have been and return to him, hoping for a start, a new start. When we return to God, he throws a party for us, too. I think of the first verse of the hymn Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. The Father sees us, loves us, and waits for us. Now the obedient brother, the brother that stayed at home, the brother that kept working with his dad, he was he was mad when he went back. Let's be honest, he was mad 
when he arrived home from the field that day and seen that his brother returned and his brother, his father welcomed him home. But the father's message to the older brother is one of compassion. The grief that the father suffered is wiped away by the return of the younger brother. The obedient brother has been rewarded already. He got to eat every day. He got to have clothes on his back. He had a warm, safe place to sleep. The father says his older, to his older son, all I have is yours. And he says to us, all I have is yours. A beautiful promise and invitation. Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son on behalf of all sinners who were so desperately in need to come home to their creator and to discover the warmth of a loving relationship with him. God, our Heavenly Father, is outside the door waiting for us to come home. When we return, he runs to us, hugs us, and invites us into the party. For the remainder of Lent, we might try to answer that invitation from our Heavenly Father. All I have is yours. During every service here in the church, we receive the same invitation from Jesus, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us go into the house and enjoy God's party. God hasn't just left the porch light on for us. He is out on the front, front porch watching, waiting, and calling us home. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and for always being there that we may stray up down the wrong road or a path, but you are always there at the end of that path with open arms waiting for us to realize our mistakes and to run to you and feel your warm embrace. Amen. And we continue with prayer. Almighty God, during our Lenten journey, we are aware that we are not prepared for the awesome Easter message of Christ's suffering and death and his glorious victory or resurrection. We ask you to help us as we offer our prayers and thanksgiving to truly understand the gift of your Son in dying for our sins. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the church worldwide and here in this diocese and parish. We pray that its light shines through times of darkness and that all may know the true love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we pray for the world... <clears throat> Excuse me. Today we pray for the worldwide Anglican Communion, the Church of the Province of Myanmar, Burma, the Most Reverend Stephen Than Mayatu, Archbishop, for our Primate Linda, David our Metropolitan Diocesan, Douglas our Priest and Rector, Sharon our Deacon, John our Honorary Assistant. In our deanery, we pray for the Parish of Sussex the Reverend Dana Dean, Associate Priest, Bishop McAllister College staff and students, and for our companion Diocese of Ho in Ghana, Bishop Matthias, his clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Almighty God, let us pray for this country and for Elizabeth, our Queen, Mary Simon, our Governor General, Justin, our Prime Minister, and for Blaine, our Premier, and for all who govern the nations, that they may continue to strive for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father God, we pray for our world today. We pray for peace and hope. Many have been troubled by natural disasters, a global pandemic, and war. Help us to turn to you as our source of hope and strength, and Lord, we offer a prayer for your peace to be with all those who have suffered and continue to do so. And we'll continue on with a prayer for the Ukraine at this point. God of peace and justice, 
We pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. We pray for this community, the Kingston Peninsula, and all surrounding communities, and for all those who live in these communities, young or old, rich or poor, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, bless our families and help us to be a blessing to them. Touch all those who are mothers to us or to others. Anoint our brothers and sisters with your healing goodness. Smile upon our children and help them to grow. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father God, we lift up to you all those who are facing illness, those who are suffering, those who are lonely or afraid. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort, and peace to their minds and bodies. Calm their fears and let them experience the healing power of your love. Today, we pray for Gary, Emily, Craig, Sherry, Alex, Alida, Audrey, Carlene, Brandon, and all those we hold quietly on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Everlasting God, we remember before you those who brought us into this world, raised us and cherished us, and made us what we are today, especially those we love but see no longer. And we ask that you be close to all those who are grieving today over the loss of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, send us out into the world, renewed by our worship and strengthened by our fellowship, so that we may be a witness to the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, and bring healing and reconciliation to our wounded world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn is 520, the King of Love, My Shepherd is, hymn number 520. We'll do verses 1, 2, 3, and 4.
sanctify, Lord, this water as we mix it with this wine. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service continues on page 196. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we abide with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall remain with him. The gifts of God for the family of God. Thanks be to God. 
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful.
On the back of your bulletin, let us pray the prayer after communion as we stand. Giver of life, you enlighten all who come into the world. Fill our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may perfectly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those whom you love this blessed Sunday and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for a moment before we sing our final hymn. 